Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start talking about more about communication. Now, we said yesterday that communication is speaking out and hearing back. The problem is, is there's a lot of things being said and very little being understood. How many of you have had somebody, maybe a teacher, look at you and say, hey, here's what I want you to do. And then you do something that's different and you get a zero for it. Or how about your mom and dad? Maybe someone, one of them asked you to do something and you did just what you thought was supposed to be done, but your parents got all upset because that wasn't what they wanted. The problem is you weren't listening. And listening is a skill. We want, what we hear is about, we spend about 70% of our time talking and 30% listening. And what we really need to be doing is 70% listening and 30% talking. <clears throat> now I say that because more people I know who are better listeners learn a lot quicker and they get more information and are able to respond better than people like me who talk a lot. And I get it. I mean, I'm the extrovert. I know that. And so we need to learn to be better listeners. Now, too often times people get busy with other things. Instead of just listening, they're, they're, they begin to do other things. They begin to daydream and you're like, oh... What am I going to do after school? What am I going to do? After? And you're hearing, but you're really not paying attention because you're daydreaming about something else. There's also those who they're, they're so busy. To, now, what, what did he say? Did I get all that exactly right? And they're trying to get every little tiny piece and they miss the whole message. That's the reason why I always say, hey, don't copy down. When you see notes come up, don't copy it down word for word. Listen to what's being said, read it, and read it, and then put it in your own words. That makes you a better listener. Not only that, but how about those who are always emotional? And they use what we call in, in my eighth grade English, pathos words. And pathos words are emotional words. And, and they're looking for that because, oh, I love that. Or, oh, that word makes me mad. I can't believe it. And, and they get so caught up in the word or the attitude they think and they miss the whole message. There's also those who are always looking to say, well, I don't like what she's got on, or I don't like what he's wearing, or, or I can't believe he said that, or golly, that, just always criticizing. Those people are looking for something to criticize instead of listening to the message to understand. Now that's happening a lot right now. When it comes to politics, we've got people who are all about criticism, but nothing is being happening about what's being said. And so listening is an important issue. Uh, another one is those who just want to argue. They're just looking for another argument and they're looking, he said that, oh, how can I argue about that? Now, all of those things restrict or keep us from being good listeners because we're listening to specific things instead of listening to the whole thing to get the message and get the understanding. Now, here's some ways to be a good listener. The first thing is you got to pay close attention to what's being said. Now, so I want you to pay close attention. And, and that close attention means, means listening for what is being said, being wa watching what they're doing. Now, I'm a firm believer that a good listener also is looking with their eyes because you might hear something but if you're looking away, you don't see the gesture that might go with it. And remember, we've already talked about, or we, we we talked about how in how communication is more than just what's being said. So we've got to be paying close attention. The other thing is, I call it mirroring. And mirroring is just repeating it. Repeating back what you learned. Now, that doesn't mean word for word. It means you tell me what you understand. What did you hear me say? Now, all the years of, of marriage counseling, all I've done, I've taught this one more and more because most couples don't get this. So this idea of mirroring is, here's what I heard you say, and I tell you what I heard you say. And then, as the listener, as the one who originally spoke, listens and says, that's not quite it. Let me see if I can give it to you another way. And so they back and forth until the list, the original listener knows exactly what the communicator or speaker was saying. 
Marrying is important. That's the reason why I'm always saying, hey, do you understand that? Can you ask me a question? If you don't understand, ask a question because that's part of this idea of mirroring it back instead of just, just letting it go on. Okay. Uh, what about outside noises? We need to learn to ignore outside noises. Now, uh, there are too many noises that go on. Right this minute, I made certain that I'm up at 7.50 something recording this. Not a whole lot going on in my house. My dog is laying here at my feet, and but he's he wants to be with me, and he's going to be real quiet the whole time. But what if someone came to the door? Well, he'd be a... He'd be a barking and trying to distract, right? And if I knew who was coming to the door, if it was just, say, a, a delivery person who just rang the doorbell and left something, I could ignore that because I knew I could see out the window back over here that maybe it was a, an Amazon truck and they're just going to drop something my door. Well, I could ignore that and go on. And so what about things like we don't pay attention to the fact that the air conditioner is going. It has a little bit of a hum. It just goes on. And so we've got to be able to ignore some of those outside. Now, that may mean the person sitting at your table or in your group who's always doing this or always trying to distract you, you need to maybe stop them and say, well, stop, I'm trying to learn here. Or you may need to just tune this ear out to them and listen with this ear, just focus over here on what needs to be. So we need to take out that distractions. Now, people always ask me, well, do you play music in your room? The answer is no. And, and it's not that I don't love music, because I love music. Um, it's the fact that too many students get involved in the music and miss the message. And so we're proving now with statistics that music's a distraction more than it is a help. So we've got to be able to get rid of these distractions. Now, if your little brother or sister right now is trying to beat on you or something like that, that's a hard one. Best thing to do is reach up and hit pause and then go beat them up. No, no, don't do that. Uh, but you know what? Deal with them and then come back to listen. So you make certain that you are a focused listener, right? The other thing is we need to keep our minds open. Now, keep our minds open means that we need to understand they may say something we don't like. They may say something we think is wrong. They may say something that we think just irritates us to death. However, a good listener listens to the whole thing. I'm one of these who, in other situations, will use something, I call it the devil's advocate, meaning using the bad side of something to get your attention. You go, hang on, that's what he's talking about. No, 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 no I'm trying to get your attention. And if you get caught up in that, you miss the whole message. So listen for the whole message and make certain that we keep our minds open to there are times when I've always done it this way. Well, I'm not, that's not the way I'm going to do it. I've never done it that way. Well, maybe you need to listen. There may be a better way to do something. And so keep an open mind as, you, uh, uh, as you're listening. The other, next thing is don't talk and listen. Now, there are... People who carry on all these side conversations all the time, guess what they're not doing? They're not listening. And guess what will happen? They'll probably miss a good part of that work. Now, I remember when I was in sixth grade, I had this wonderful teacher, Miss Ware, and she was just so frustrated one day because everybody was talking and ignoring what she said. And, you know, and so she happened to say, all right, we are finished for the day. Close your books up, put it up and go home. Now, it was a little bit after lunch. Just so happened, I'm not saying I was always the best listener, just so happened that I was listening. And so I closed my book up, I put it up, I walked out the door. And she came running after me. She said, oh, you can't leave yet. I said, but you just said we could. She, she kind of rolled her eyes. She said, you're right, I did say that. I was trying to see if anybody was listening. I said, I was listening, I'm going home. Well, I couldn't. I was in sixth grade. I couldn't leave by myself and all that. But, but the point was, I was listening and 
one of the few, few times I wasn't talking and I heard what was going on. We need to be listening. That means close our mouth and open our ears. And when we start doing that more, we're going to do a better job. Now, those of us who are, remember our thing about being a extrovert or an introvert, extroverts are gonna have a problem with that. Maybe we need to take a chip clip or you know, put it on our lips, maybe to stop that. And the number of you in my class, come on, I know. I mean, that, there's that table, you know, is always doing this and not doing this. And your grades reflect it. And so we need to be better listeners, and that means stop, okay? All right, when you're taking notes, take the jest with some detail. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about communication, but, uh, but this idea of detail, every speaker is going to tell you what they want you to know. They're not gonna, they're gonna ramble on, they're gonna tell stories and all that, but watch them. They'll start leaning in if they want you to get something. They'll emphasize it with their voice. They'll tell you what points will show up on a test. Now, I didn't learn that when I was younger. And I always hated it, those people who, who, man, they scored high on every single test. Why? Because they were listening intently and getting the message. And when they got that message, they made that note. And so watch because a good listener a good speaker is going to be emphasizing it in a different way. And when they do, guess what? You hear it, you're going to know exactly what's on that test. All right? Okay. So here are the basic things I want you to know about listening for the day. I want you to take this information, process it. I'm going to put a uh, um, another uh, an article up on listening. I want you to read through it. I want you to kind of do the same thing we did yesterday. And that is I want you to... Read through the article, just a short summary. Again, I'm asking you to mirror it back, tell me what you learned, and then tell me, do you think you're a good listener? Or what are some areas that maybe you need to improve on that would make you a better listener? Because good listening skills are gonna translate into better jobs, better money, and better relationships. Because back up here to this one, that is the number one cause of divorce. I want you to have good relationships. I want you to have a good job. Listening skills are going to be important. All right. So now you know what you're going to do. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Do it whatever, however you want to during the day, meaning whatever time. But make certain you turn it in to me because I am looking over. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.